The Boondocks has earned its place in the world of great adult cartoons. Fun action scenes, interesting characters, and a down-to-earth setting that makes the characters relatable in their own way. Not to mention some of the most incredibly over-the-top comedy that fans still quote to this day. Man, I'm like the Terminator in this vest. The series has taken on confronting stereotypes and has even given commentary on society with some pretty bold satire. But of course, in a world full of hardships and trials, there are some characters who prove themselves as great leaders, and others who might be downright evil. I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and this is The Boondocks Good to Evil. But oh boy, he had another thing coming. Now, before we get started, we just wanted to point out that we'll be sticking to the main cast of characters, and maybe an occasional one-off character who was especially memorable. No, we won't be including Chris Hansen, or should I say Chris Hansom. As usual, we'll start with the most good, and the gold medal of good goes to 10-year-old Jasmine. It's difficult to place Jasmine anywhere but here. Simply put, she's a young girl who only wants to make friends and maybe get her own pony someday. I'm gonna name him Sammy Davis Jr. the Pony. She sees the positive in everything, and while her naive nature can be a little annoying at times, it's expected that with her limited life experience that she would perceive things as simple or black and white. She takes things at face value and ends up being taken advantage of and pushed off to the side, but never tries to do that to others. It's hard to beat that kind of purity. I mean, how many of us would cry if we snuck into a movie without paying? Most people would just be happy that they got away with it. <laughs> The silver medal of good goes to the straight-laced attorney, Tom. When your main fear is what happens in prison, your goal is gonna be to stay out of prison. So you're gonna live your life being as nice as you can. Tom is a polite guy. He adores his wife and daughter, and he tries to fight for what's right. And he takes time to be there for the Freeman family. He's the only one Huey trusted to check on them when the family might be in danger. Please check on us periodically this weekend. Best regards, Huey Freeman. The only reason Tom isn't first on the list is that he's heavily influenced by how much he can get paid. Let's face it, he did take Thugnificent's side on the neighborly dispute they had once the rapper offered to hire him. Now, the third on our list is actually the third member of Tom's family, Sarah, the typical homemaker mom and loving wife. She's not given too much depth, but there are times in which she can be insensitive. It's easy to see that if Jasmine wasn't in the picture, she might have left Tom ages ago. She often complains about how his overly cautious ways can be irritating and make them miss out on a lot in life. You don't want me to apologize? No, I don't! Not to mention the fact that she did ditch Tom on their anniversary to hang out with Usher. Next is Otis, known mainly as Thugnificent. This may be a shock, but this man is is really only looking to forge the best life that he can for himself. He grew up in a rough environment where people were locked away from the rest of society, without people to aid them or even enough money to buy clothes or food. When he first moves in next to the Freemans, he throws money around to spread the wealth and happiness. But because of his experience, he places a bit too much emphasis on money and what it can do. He tries to advance his career as much as possible, but avoids Gangstalicious when finding out the rapper is gay, not wanting to be seen as such himself. He can also be temperamental, getting into a fight with Robert, but in Thugnificent's defense, he did believe that he had permission from Robert to throw that party. You filed a complaint against Thugnificent? Now we have Thugnificent's crew, both ranking together, Phenomenal and Mactastic. There isn't too much info given about these two characters, but they support Thugnificent in his career and his choices, so we'll rank them both close to him. They rank lower simply for following his lead in ghosting Gangstalicious, with Mactastic making the comment that he knew there was something wrong with him. I knew it. I always had a feeling about that dude. There's also the addition of Phenomenal losing his temper with Robert almost more than anyone else in the squabble. Next is our hero with the afro, Huey Freeman. Pessimistic, brutally honest, and sometimes a wet blanket on everyone else's party. Jesus was black. 
Ronald Reagan was the devil. But he's also philosophical and one of the most principled characters on the show. Not to mention he usually finds himself being the sole voice of reason in many situations. There will be no more diss records. He tends to be extreme, but he does genuinely believe it's necessary. He's grown up seeing negative stereotypes, has seen his friends and neighbors shot at, and sees what glamorizing thug life does to his brother. So it makes sense that he takes his already strong views very far. Does that mean that he should take nunchucks into a movie theater? No. For better or worse, he has learned that when words fail, fists are sometimes needed. Next is Riley's teacher, Mr. Petto. Mostly known for calling Riley a certain word that occurs on this show a lot. He's a bit of an odd character to place. The guy is clearly trying to do his best, and dealing with a kid like Riley day after day can't be easy. He isn't given much depth, but we can at least say despite a horrible lapse in judgment on his part, he did admit to his mistake and faced up to what happened afterwards. Should he have tried to justify his choice and repeatedly say the word on the local news? I'm never ever gonna say any form of I'm gonna go with no. Break out the champagne for the next character, Crystal. Although a gold digger and a user of men, she's not the worst woman to walk the earth. Mmm. Mmm. These cheddar biscuits are so good. In fact, she's a pretty decent person in spite of her role in life. She does take advantage of Robert, but considering the alternative is going back to Slickback, can you really blame her? She uses seduction as leverage in life because it's all she's known and even admits that she doesn't get why Robert doesn't see her for what she is, despite her lying. To be honest, me either. It's so obvious. And there is something to be said for how she treats the boys. She can be a little harsh while playing video games, but she doesn't abuse them or try to get them sent away to make her life easier. Robert is the next character on our list. Formerly an aide in the civil rights movement, he's lived his life afraid of being persecuted for his race. All he wants in life is to live in a nice house in a nice neighborhood. Sure, he's shallow and not the best role model, but he tries. New shoes, new shoes. But he doesn't always put his best foot forward and often comes out looking bad. He does kill a man over a dispute, causes a large portion of the population to become overweight after his restaurant opened, and does use physical violence to discipline his grandkids, which is pretty bad. But considering how he grew up, much of his behavior makes sense, and he does try his best. Following, we have Riley. He's not evil, despite popular belief. He's an eight-year-old kid who looks up to the rappers and gangsters he sees on TV. He does what he can to be accepted, but that often means being ignorant or impulsive. He's ranked lower than the rest of his family because he openly mocks whatever he can about anyone. He lashes out violently when told not to hang out with Ed and Gin Rummy, I'm going to Ed's house. despite Huey only wanting to protect his brother. And he breaks down into tears, worried that he's gay, just because Gangs Delicious is. He has a lot of growth to do, but he's not the worst by any means. Next up, we have the White Shadow, Huey's mysterious follower. You enjoy abusing people's illusions. I respect that. We don't know much about him, of course. He's creepy, and his very job can be called unethical. But while his presence is unnerving, he is just doing his job. He isn't malicious, but he is threatening to an extent. Well, this time they actually are coming to get you. Knowing someone like him has access to your friends, your family, your conversations, and maybe your inner thoughts, well, it's not clean work. Cindy is up next. She shows up as Riley's sort of love interest. She's not a bad kid by any means. The worst thing about her is her temper and a tendency to get in trouble. What do you think you're doing here? You talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Open your bag. But really, we can't say she'd be in those situations if it weren't for Riley. You can't help but feel bad for her considering the way her mother behaves and the way Cindy herself is mocked for it. Even running off the basketball court in tears from Riley making fun of her. The only reason she's placed so low on the list is she tends to come off as more impulsive and violent. She slapped a girl for almost no reason and took a bat to a man trying to intimidate her. All that chocolate can be bad for your health. Say what? 
At the very least, she's protective of those she cares for and fights for what she wants to achieve. Next is Reverend Goodlove. He makes plenty of statements as if he's trying to look out for his fellow man. You have hurt their feelings. Now, somebody gonna pay. He's a tough guy to rank simply because he's all over the place. He covers himself well and makes some good arguments as to why he does the things that he does. But he's also caught in a few compromising positions that you can't deny look bad. Not to mention gorging on food at an almost constant rate while Huey himself is on a hunger strike. He puts more into a display than he does substance. Robert said it well when he pointed out Good Love's rally looked more like a showing of American Idol than it did a protest of BET. And selling out his morals for a show with the very company he was fighting against, it's hard to respect a guy like that. Next up is Gangstalicious. Not the most wicked, but by his own admission, he is a fraud. He glamorizes a lifestyle he's trying to embody for his career, and it gets him shot. I got shot! I got shot! No, I got shot for real! A couple times. Rapper Gangstalicious has been shot. Again? Not to mention he lies about his own sexuality while encouraging others that are gay to be berated. Gay? Even doing some of the mocking himself which is pretty awful. And the way he tries so hard to get Riley to approve of him, sending him gifts and doing him favors, is creepy and inappropriate. Mrs. Van Heusen is next, a passion for protecting her neighbors and herself, making sure her friends won't allow themselves to be victims. I say it's time we officially militarized the neighborhood wall. And arming untrained people with a load of guns. We can't blame her too much for being extreme. We see the world that she's in. Come on, you want some of this? Come on. But she shot up a neighborhood to chase burglars without any regard to any bystanders. Next on our list is Bushido Brown, the talented karate man. Working as hired security, he tends to be a little too overzealous about his job. More often than not, he tends to assault people for little to no reason. When we first see him, he's protecting Oprah and shows us that he's more than willing to beat up a child if need be, knocking Huey into last week. The next time he appears is when he's hired to protect Robert and his family. He ends up dying protecting them, but it hardly makes up for how he takes advantage of the employment to spend as much of their money as possible. Next up, as we descend down our scale of morality, is Slickback. No, that's a pimp named Slickback. Sorry, a pimp named Slickback. A man who gets by by using women Don't start with that, we need another computer again And who encourages other men to do the same The way he slaps around women is not commendable by any means So he's pretty low on the list But I suppose he does attempt to help Tom fix his marriage For a payment We've already paid Mr. Uh, pimp named Slickback a retainer of $2,500 I guess the best thing that we can compliment him for is his style The infamous Mr. Wunzler is next He's not a generous guy by any means. He's your typical run-of-the-mill businessman who takes advantage of people, really anyone. He puts the future of the town at stake over a kickball game. The Chinese are calling in some debts and I had to bet everything on this game. He was willing to scare Huey for life over a bet. You think I'm bad? Just wait till the Chinese take away all the freedoms you enjoy. He allows his grandson to rob the banks in town. He uses Jasmine to get her lemonade recipe. But we place him a little higher because at the very least, he's friendly with Robert almost immediately. He doesn't go after Riley for shooting Ed, knowing it was likely his grandson who started it. And he'll still be a f***ing idiot. And he doesn't exactly try to hide who he is. He's running a business, and that's it. Next, we have to mention Luna the insane temporary girlfriend to Robert. She starts out nice enough. She doesn't false advertise herself like some of the women Robert attempted to date. Yeah, uh-huh, just like the picture, right? But we soon see her as the unstable woman she is. She reveals she's well-versed in deadly combat arts and uses those skills when Robert tries leaving her. She's gone. We could argue that her friend Nicole encouraged her actions. Uh -huh. You see, girl, that's why I'm by myself. But Luna still performed them. The only thing we can say in her defense is that she'd had numerous abusive relationships beginning with her father. She does eventually walk away and leave the family in peace, but then allows her friend to talk her into blowing herself up. Well, I hope her friend isn't giving her more bad. 
A sad ending. It would have been nice to see her redeem herself so we can move her higher on our scale of good, but it is what it is. Now we move on to the ever-present racist Uncle Ruckus. No relation. Known for his self-loathing and racist language, ignorant behavior, and his violent tendencies, this guy is a total mess. Even his near-death experience is a delusion. Praise my god. The only reason he's not ranked any lower is that he does occasionally show kindness to some of the cast. He offers to help when Tom is possessed Get your black out of here. and offers his condolences when he thought Sarah and Tom's marriage was failing. That said, this guy's outlook on just about everything is nothing less than repulsive, which makes him a pretty hilarious and brilliantly written satirical character, and he does get struck by lightning so we can take comfort in that. Ed Wunsler III is next. A former soldier and wannabe thug, What's up, yo? he's nothing but a series of extremes. He definitely uses his family's reputation to do a lot of crap he normally wouldn't be able to get away with. Robbing banks, shooting up a party, holding up a gas station, Look! He got a weapon! He's made a lot of bad choices. We can say his experience in the war likely traumatized him and made him reckless. We can claim that he keeps bad company that encourages him to be a thug. Or we can just say what it is. He's trying to take on a lifestyle he thinks will make him cool or impressive. He's stated various times that a lot of what he does is to impress women. Texting my ass off. Shit, she's like texting. I be texting him all the time. Typically during arguments with Jin Rummy. Speaking of, Jin Rummy takes his place below his friend Ed. How is he worse than Ed? Well, he's more genuine about his hardened exterior. He's nice to kids like Riley and Huey, for the most part. Y'all sure you don't want no breakfast? I got English muffins and peach jelly. But he has a way of twisting a situation to benefit himself. He led the holdup at the gas station, even tricking a cop into seeing a gun that wasn't there. Put down the weapon! He's also extremely judgmental. Man, I don't get that. Get what? That texting sh Mocking people for texting, using Bluetooth, and other such insignificant things. He goes through life angry and therefore causes chaos wherever he goes. And the bronze medal for most evil character in the boondocks goes to head of BET, Deborah Leval. Welcome to BET headquarters. I'm Deborah Leval. Is it any surprise when her name essentially can be translated as Deborah the Evil? The wiki fan page describes her as a strange crossover between Corella Deville and Dr. Evil, and honestly, that's a pretty dead on summary. She's fun to watch, without a doubt, but that doesn't make her any less malicious. Her entire purpose in life is to quote unquote destroy black people. The destruction of black people! Her resume of bizarre evil behavior includes firing anyone who can read and refusing to pay anyone not in her main circle. And it's hard to argue that she's not heartless when she allows Huey to continue his hunger strike and even considers hiring ninjas to eliminate him. <laughs> Like we said, fun to watch, but she'd be horrifying to actually work for. Beware those Prada shoes. Now, the silver medal of evil goes to the man who lived his life spreading as much misery as possible, Colonel Stinkmeaner. This man continues driving despite being blind, even going as far as to brag when he thinks he hit someone on the way to the mall. I think I hit a wheelchair on the way over here. While it is unfortunate that he died at Robert's hand, it's hard to argue that the world isn't a better place without him, which is not enjoyed for long since he's blessed by the devil himself to return to Earth to raise as much havoc as possible. When he possesses Tom and attacks the family, he's only defeated by the concept of peace after Huey tricks him into being friendly with Ruckus, a truly evil and awful person that caused way too much trouble. But who does the gold medal for most evil character in the boondocks go to? Well, there's one more evildoer we have to rank, and he deserves the gold medal of evil more than anyone. Someone whose name we shudder to even say. If he wants you, you can do this the easy way or the hard way. The choice is yours. We're talking about Fleece Johnson, the Booty Warrior. 
It goes without saying that this character is the most vile, terrifying character on the entire show, making the prison episode one of the most memorable I want that booty time. and quotable episodes in adult cartoon history. But the truly, remarkably evil thing about this character is that the booty warrior is real. His character was based pretty much identically on the real life Fleece Johnson. Now we can do this the easy way or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. A prisoner who gave an interview on MSNBC Lockup. And want to hear the scariest part? He was recently released from prison. So make sure to check under your beds for the booty warrior tonight. But let us know what you think. Who are the most good and evil characters in the boondocks? And make sure to binge our full good to evil playlist where we analyze the morality of your favorite shows, movies, and cartoons. But most importantly, seriously, check under your bed for the booty warrior.